so in this uh, particular module i am going to uh, talk both about lung diaphragmatic as well as cardiac ultrasounds so if you want to know about the basics of it i would suggest that you go and uh, recapitulate your knowledge from the individual uh, modules and i'll i won't go very deep into each of these subtopics but i'll just, just try to give you an overview of how we can use each of these ultrasound measurements to better titrate our mechanical ventilation and better help in the process of liberation from mechanical ventilation as well right so coming back to our discussion as we know lung ultrasound is good to assess lung aeration as well as re, uh, loss of lung aeration so what essentially lung ultrasound does is that it tries to image the lung at six thoracic zones on each side of the chest right so total 12 thoracic zones uh, the lung ultra, uh, we will use the ultrasound to image the lungs at 12 different thoracic zones six on each side of the chest right and what we are basically trying to image is the lung tissue at the interface of the air and the fluid right so whenever there is a complete loss of aeration whenever there is consolidation in those cases the ultrasound beams as we know are able to pass through the lung tissue and in those cases we will be able to image the diseased lung much better so for example the various patterns that we see in lung ultrasonography both in health and disease has been delineated by these various patterns like here a b1 b2 and c patterns so what is the c pattern c pattern is your consolidation pattern as we know whenever there is a tissue consolidation or the lung consolidation or whenever there is an atelectasis or collapse what essentially happens is that there is complete loss of aeration at that particular zone of the lung right and therefore that area of the lung is easily picked up by the lung ultrasound and we get what we get is this sort of an image which basically indicates your lung consolidation where the lung kind of resembles your tissues right and this is usually seen when there is an extensive loss of aeration right and this is typically seen in consolidation but it can also be seen in lung collapse as well uh, in milder degrees of loss of aeration of lung what we will see is varying degrees of alveolar flooding with fluid so that is usually a marker of your extravascular lung water so the b1 and the b2 zones or the b1 and b2 patterns are usually seen in varying degrees of loss of aeration of the lung b1 is usually seen when there is a mild loss of aeration in those cases what we will see is mul multiple vertical artifacts which are basically known as the b lines so you have the plural line at the top as we know and then from the plural line we will see this kind of vertical artifacts which are known as the b lines and they usually signify some degrees of loss of lung aeration so the b1 pattern is usually seen when there is a moderate loss of aeration so normally three to five b lines are normal but if it is more than that we usually consider it to be pathological on the other hand when we see multiple coalescent b lines so they are almost like a laser coming from the top so you have multiple coalescent b lines they usually signify a significant loss of aeration right and finally we have the normal lung pattern which is your a pattern the a pattern is seen when you have a plural line and from the plural line you have varying degrees of image artifacts or reverberation artifacts this is seen when your lungs are completely well aerated and therefore the ultrasound beam is not able to penetrate the lung tissue in those cases you have the plural line over here at the top and from the plural line you will have your reverberation artifacts which are your image artifacts which are seen when the lungs are well aerated and they are usually indicate a normal lung and obviously you would be looking for normal lung sliding in the plural line which usually indicates that your visceral and pleural pleura, parietal pleura are moving in perfect opposition so this is your baseline lung ultrasound knowledge so but just by doing a lung ultrasonography in the various regions of the chest we would be able to degree, assess varying degrees of abnormalities so for example if you are faced with a situation where you are seeing a dense consolidation or a loss of lung aeration then that would indicate that you need to treat the pneumonia or consolidation or if there is a collapse you need to treat that collapse better by using your antibiotics chest physiotherapy recruitment maneuvers as well on the other hand if you see this sort of a b1 or b2 pattern that usually indicates some degrees of lung congestion and in those cases these patients might benefit from higher degrees of peep or sometimes they might also benefit from fluid removal right so just by looking at the ultrasound patterns it will help in fine tuning not just your ventilation but your therapeutic measures appropriately on the other hand if you look at any pattern that generally indicates that your lung aeration is good and generally you do not need to worry in those cases unless you have a very specific situation so based on these various lung patterns uh, the blue protocol was described as we know in the blue protocol what we essentially did was that we classified this lung aeration or based on this classic lung aeration patterns we classified them into the various abnormalities that might be seen for example if you have an a profile 
A profile is when you have the normal A lines which are visible and along with that you have a lung sliding and this is usually considered to be healthy, right? An A dashed profile or A prime profile is seen when you have an A profile but as you can see here there is no lung sliding. So you have an A profile but you are not able to visualize any lung sliding. If you see this kind of a profile that should alert you to the possibility of pneumothorax. It can also happen with an endobronchial intubation or even patients with ARDS in which lung compliance is very poor. But again pneumothorax would be on high on your differentials. Then you have the B profile. In the B profile you have this vertical lines or this comet lines and they generally indicate that there is some degrees of fluid overload or loss of aeration. And finally you have the B prime profile. In the B prime profile you have a B profile but the lung sliding is absent and this can usually be seen in patients who have a uh, consolidation or there is a significant loss of aeration even in patients with ARDS, pneumonias you might see this sort of a B prime profile. And finally you have the C profile. The C profile is usually seen when you have this sort of a tissue like consolidation of the lung and generally this indicates that the lungs are severely diseased, right? So these are the characteristic profiles we've seen in the lung ultrasound. So how can we use our basic knowledge about lung ultrasound to identify whether we need to give them higher PEEP or whether we need to recruit them or whether we need to do anything in terms of fine tuning their mechanical ventilation. So as we have read about, we know A profile is good, right? So there is a good aeration of the lungs. So somebody, if somebody has initially had an A profile but now has landed up with a B1 um, or a B2 profile, what that indicates for you is that there is a loss of aeration, right? So the loss of aeration could be because of multiple reasons. It could be because you are not giving them an adequate PEEP that is leading to maybe loss of aeration of the lungs. It could also be because these patients are glossily fluid overloaded, right? So in your mechanically ventilated patients, if you see there is a loss of lung aeration as signified by a change from an A profile to a B1 or B2 profile, that should alert you to the possibility of some of these factors happening and therefore in those cases we might need to titrate our PEEP better or in some cases we might even need to target a negative balance. On the other hand if you see maybe this patient had a B1 or B2 profile to begin with and now this patient has landed up with a C profile. Thus indicates that this patient is now developing either a consolidation or this patient might even be developing a collapse, right? So in those cases, we might need to send new cultures, we might need to titrate our antibiotics better and we might need to even do a bronchoscopy and intense chest physiotherapy to treat this consolidation and collapse appropriately. We might even see pleural effusions as well and depending on the clinical context, some of these patients, especially if they have a large effusion, they might need a drainage of that pleural effusion. So just by looking at the ultrasound at the different lung ultrasound at different thoracic regions and by noting the change in pattern from a particular pattern to another pattern, it will give us an idea that whether we are doing well in terms of mechanical ventilation as well as our other adjunct supportive measures, right? So uh, this is what I was talking about. So as you can see over here, initially if you have something sort of this sort of a lung consolidation along with that, as you can see over here, there's a bit of pleural effusion as well. This would usually indicate that there is a significant loss of lung aeration or there is significant de-aeration, right? So this is an indicator that the lungs are very wet or there is complete loss of gas exchange in those areas. And ideally we would want to move from this zone to a zone where there is a lot of aeration or where there is less number of B lines. So as you can see over here, as we go towards the right, there is progressively increase in the number of B lines and till we have reached a state of complete deviation. So just by looking at the different changes in lung ultrasonography patterns at different lung zones, we can give us an idea whether we are doing well in terms of lung aeration or whether we are seeing some worsening of aeration in our patient. So the best aeration is one where we have a lot of A lines while the worst aeration is one where we see a lot of dense consolidation. And ideally if we are even facing a lot of B lines, we would ideally try to titrate our fluid balance as well as other adjunctive therapies better.